tech site and movie. Hi, I'm Nick Cerami, and I'm here with uh, Paul Goebel. Paul is a Tucson native, an actor, comedian, and a television presenter. He attended the University of Arizona, won the TV Land Ultimate Fan Search, and is a producer of podcasts such as The Paul Goebel Show, uh, Hey, Watch This, and Bottle Episode. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> good, how are you doing? Excellent. I'm so, good. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, I know a lot of people know you from the show Beat the Geeks, right. or you're the TV geek. That's right. Uh, for people who are unfamiliar, could you tell us a little bit about the show and your involvement with it? Um, well, uh, Beat the Geeks was on Comedy Central, I think, back in 2000, probably when you were, like, what, five years old or <laughs> even born yet? Yeah, I, was yeah. About, I think I was nine. About that. All right. <laughs> and uh, it was on uh, at the same time as Ben Stein's Money when there was used to be game shows on Comedy Central. And it was me and two other guys. I was the TV geek, and there was the movie geek and the music geek. And then we had a fourth geek that changed uh, every episode. And then contestants would come on and answer questions. And uh, they would get easy questions, and we would get hard questions. And they would try to beat the geeks. And it was a, it was a great gig, because I just showed up and answered questions and got to insult people. And, uh, <laughs> and it was really fun. And they did, uh, we did two seasons. And I got to meet a bunch of celebrities, idols of mine. And, uh, and uh, I found out later, after we got canceled, that there was a French version of Beat the Geeks, uh, and I finally got a copy of it, and it's hilarious, because it's the same thing. They wear these dumb robes, and they're all real cocky, but they're all, like, they're, but they're speaking French, so they're, t like, twice as annoying, sure. you know, because they're French. <laughs> and the best, I don't speak French, but the best part is, like, just like our show at the beginning, they introduce all the geeks, and the geeks insult people and say something cocky. And so you watch it, and the geeks are like, this, and you, all, you don't know what they're saying, but <laughs> sure. it's all snotty, except at the end, the, the last guy goes, Bon chance, which of course means good luck. Right. And I thought that was brilliant. That was like so snotty. Bon chance. He was all French and total douche of eggs. It was it was a, it was a funny thing, but it was a great gig. I got to uh, you know I got to work for Comedy Central and meet a lot of cool people. And and since then, you know, it it it, it got me more into stand up. Sure. When I was in L.A., so so I've been doing stand up since then and acting and and uh, stuff like that. But I just recently moved back to uh, to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And I decided I would come down and, and do a show. Okay, well, cool. Yeah. Um, and I know that there was an effort a couple years ago on Kickstarter mm. to maybe get uh, Beat the Geeks back going again. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, I came, uh, you know, I would, uh, shortly after the show went off the air, it was weird because there was like a lot of people would recognize me from the show and then it went off the air and it was done. And then there was like a groundswell, like all the like high school kids and stuff who watched it, who were now graduated and out in the world would recognize me and be like, oh, I love that show. And so then as these, these people got older and got like real jobs and in positions of power, more people would say it. And I was like, well, let's do a new version. And I still kept in touch with the producers of the old version. Mm -hmm. So I talked to them about doing a, an updated version. And uh, the problem is Fox, uh, the Fox you know, movie studio or whatever, they own the Beat the Geeks, the, the actual sure. uh, product beat the geeks so you can never do it without their permission but i tried to get a new version going that was a little different so um uh, you know it was basically a new game show it's called uber geek okay. and uh and i put it together and i pitched it and uh and we got some money but we just we shot too shot too high okay. as you often do on kickstarter and we did not reach our goal okay. but the good the good side the 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 you know the silver lining and all that is that i now I never have to uh, donate any money to anyone's Kickstarter ever again, because I can say, well, my Kickstarter failed, so you know what? There you go. There's your Kickstarter, too, friend. <laughs> OK, sure. <laughs> and you said when you were doing Beat the Geeks when you were out in LA, that's when you started you know, doing stand-up and acting, or yeah. more of that. Were you already in that world before, or did it help get you into it? Yeah, well, I've been doing stand-up ever since college. You know, I went to U of A. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when Laughs opened up, we would always go there for the open mic and stuff. And then after college, I moved to Chicago and did a lot of comedy there. Um, and the great, the great thing was, and I did, I did shows in, in LA and stuff before Beat the Geeks, but the great thing was, because there's so much competition, I had a TV credit automatically, so I could get on more and more shows. And so, man, I fed off that TV credit for a lot of years. We were only on two seasons, but here we are, 2016, almost 2017, we're still talking about it. So, uh, so I fed on that for a lot of years. And then I went back to Comedy Central. I was on At Midnight mm -hmm. in May. 
Uh, and it was all because of friends I made. I've known Chris Hardwick for many, many years. So, uh, so yeah, I've been doing stand up, uh, you know, pretty steadily uh, in LA and around the LA area. And uh, you know, and I try to get get on as much as I can. It's uh, stand up is a great way to, you know, kind of get get the demons out. Sure. And uh, and it's a it's a great gig. And so I came to town. We got this gig tomorrow, and I'm doing your show tonight. Right. And uh, yeah, it's anytime I can get on stage, I like to because. You know, that's my time. That's my five or ten minutes or whatever. So absolutely, I highly recommend it. Okay, and uh, I know that you're known as the king of TV. Right. So I was hoping maybe you could tell us what do you think is the best thing that's on right now. What do you think is super overrated too? Oh well, um, th this has been it's it's a weird year for TV, especially this year because uh, I think the polit the whole political climate made people so unsure of what was going to be. Uh, welcome and what wasn't going to be welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike when George Bush was president, there was a whole sitcom that made fun of him. Right. Uh, but now people are like, well, do we want to make jokes about Republicans? And so people kind of, they produce safe stuff for the networks, but the great stuff is on cable or on uh, like HBO or on streaming services and like that. And that's where the best stuff is coming from. Like Stranger Things was really popular on Netflix and Atlanta on FX is mm -hmm. really, is is just changing the way they make sitcoms and all the stuff on HBO. And the great thing about it is like stuff on HBO, you get stuff that's really exciting like Game of Thrones mm -hmm. uh, or you know, or real funny sitcoms or whatever, but then they'll try something like like Luck, which is a great idea and it's got great acting, but you know, they had to shut it down because all these horses were dying apparently. It was all about, you know, horse racing. And then you got the show Vinyl. You know, that was on uh, last season, which seemed amazing. Mm -hmm. But then you watch it and go, oh, this is really actually terrible. But, like, you can see what they were trying to do. You know, sure. it's like, uh, it's like I, I see where all the money was spent, and I get what you were trying to do, but just it didn't hit. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because they let people kind of experiment, you know. And you can go two, three episodes without really getting into the meat of the show, unlike a network where they have to put everything in the first five minutes, you know, sure. to, get, to get your attention. So... I'd say as far as networks go, a lot of stuff on Fox is really good. Last Man on Earth is still very funny. Son of Zorn, I think, is very funny. Mm -hmm. um, there's another show coming on uh, in Fox, on Fox, I, I can't remember what it's called, but that's going to be on Sundays. Uh, it was a half-hour sitcom that looks good. Um, a lot of good stuff on Netflix coming up. I like a lot of the foreign stuff, a lot of the English cop shows and stuff on Netflix. Okay. I like to watch that because uh, it's like they've already been on in, in England or whatever, so mm -hmm. they're so different here. Uh, and like they had Law and Order UK. I don't know if oh, you watch that show. That was, that was very cool. That. Yeah, it was just like regular Law and Order, except they were all English. Sure. So uh, uh, it's fun to see all that different stuff on like BBC or Netflix or, or wherever you see it. As far as what's overrated, I gotta say, SNL had a great year a couple seasons ago, and now mm -hmm. I think ever since they let Trump host, they realized they're kind of toothless. Yeah. So I think this season has been a little overrated, mm -hmm. especially this last episode. Holy crap, that was no good. Um, and uh, I think one of the worst shows that people like is probably Nashville, mm -hmm. which got canceled, and I was so happy ABC <laughs> canceled it, but then the, uh, like the country music channel brought it back and they just oh, had a man. big special and oh, I hate that show so much It's it, and I'm a, I love a nice nighttime drama, but man, I, I don't get it sure. It's the new ER in my opinion, which was probably my most hated show. <laughs> I still hate ER. It's not even on anymore I still hate it <laughs> Okay, fair enough um, So you yeah, you're in town for uh, a week, a few days? Just a few days. You know, Christmas okay. is the weekend. My, my uh, family, my mom still lives here, so I was going to, you know, come by and see her, and I want to do a show while I was in town, and, and uh, you know, and then go back. I live in Mesa, so I was just going to drive back there. So it's a short drive. But uh, I'm just here tonight and tomorrow. Uh, I got the big show tomorrow at Mr. Head's at 10 o'clock, uh, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And I wanted to come in early so I could... Uh, try some jokes out at another show, and it turned out to be your show. Right on. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that tonight, and then, uh, you know, eat a lot of EGs while I'm here. That's <laughs> that's the main thing I do while I'm in town, man. I got one in the car waiting for me as soon as Absolutely. we wrap this up. <laughs> I'm going to eat all kinds of EGs. And I've been eating EGs since I got here. I weighed 200 pounds when I got here. Now look at this. <laughs> this is all EGs. That's it's what this is. A day and a half of EGs. It's, oh, man, I can't <laughs> stop. Um, I know every every person who does comedy has some horrific bombing story. Yeah. I just wanted to know if you have one off the top of your head. Well, I mean, I still bomb to this day, but I don't <laughs> care. I care a lot less about it now sure. when I bomb because I know as long as I'm trying to do a good show, there's other things that, that uh, 
that will make people hate it. But um, I was one time I did I was doing a show. I was opening for Greg Fitzsimmons at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach, and I had known Greg for a long time, and he was just doing two shows one night on a Friday. And uh, I went there, and um, it was two shows. And the first show, I killed it. I don't know why, but uh, for some reason, they loved me. And the, the middler who was supposed to go on between me and Greg was late. He got caught in traffic. So I'm like stretching. I was supposed to do like seven minutes. I ended up doing 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. And I'm just screwing around and talking to people. And man, they love me. And I was like, all right, this will be easy. Great crowd. And so then I go eat some dinner, come back for the second show. And I don't know if it was because these people were already done with the night, they had already gone out or whatever, but they hated me. They did not find, I did the exact same act, sure. but they, for whatever reason, they were not interested in what I was saying. <laughs> they didn't know who I was, they didn't care. At one point, I was like talking to this girl up front and she was like, don't talk to me. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, all right, I guess that's not gonna work. And it was, the, and I even went, I had my girlfriend, uh, the girl I was dating, who's now my wife, she went to the show with me and I got back to the green room and I was like, wow, they hated me. And she goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess I can imagine it. And they wouldn't even bail you out. No, because <laughs> she, she saw the difference in the two shows. She was like, yeah, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But then the other, the middle, and then the middle guy went up, he killed it. So I don't know, it must have been me. I don't know why they hated me. But you know, you're, you're, you're gonna always bomb for one reason or another. Just don't make it be your fault. That's the key. If you sure. bomb because the crowd is bad or the, you know, there was an alarm went off or somebody threw something at you or whatever, just as long as it's not your fault and you do your time and the money's green, that's all you got to worry about. Right on. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. With us. And, uh, yeah, you can see Paul tonight at the screening room. Uh, that's at 730 or tomorrow, Mr. Heads on 4th Ave, and that's at 10 o'clock. And uh, coming down from downtown Tucson, uh, 5 on 20, this is Nick Cerami and Paul Goebbels.